The body we think we know is really an illusion, born of our limited perspective. Sometimes, of course, ignorance is bliss. It's not easy accepting the fact that billions of other organisms live on and in us. Most of them are bacteria like these. A microscopic swarm in a drop of sweat. Some of our closest companions have never been introduced to us. The hair follicle mite lives in holes in our scalp through which hair grows, a kind of tiny parasitic mole. It looks like a science fiction creature, but it's only one 250th of an inch long. That's small enough to escape the attention of our nerve cells. Otherwise, we'd never stop scratching. Just knowing they exist is bad enough. The mites especially like the large follicles of our eyelashes. They thrive on fat and dirt and have even developed a taste for mascara. But for other denizens of the unknown world, there's a much more abundant food source nearby. It's our skin, constantly renewed by new cells pushing up older ones. The top layer is made up of dead, compacted cells. Every hour, we shed one and a half million skin flakes. And each one has its own colony of hitchhiking bacteria. The air is full of these small pieces of ourselves and the microorganisms that call them home. What we see in the mirror is a layer of dead cells soon to be cast off. Still, even dead cells have their appeal. How do I look? But change the perspective, and it's a different story. When we're finally forced to face reality, we find that dead skin makes up 90% of the dust on our floors, not to mention an army of creeping, crawling creatures. This is the front end of a dust mite seen through an electron microscope. It's about an 80th of an inch long, impossible to see with the naked eye. Its diet is mostly skin flakes, and there are more than enough to go around. It's a never-ending feast, and we're the purveyors, like it or not. Dust mites are everywhere we are. Here we see one of them enjoying his dinner, although his table manners could use a bit of improvement. Clearly, his parents never cautioned him against playing with his food. If you think you can get away from dust mites, think again. Even in our beds, they keep us company. They move easily through the weave of blankets and sheets in search of more food. They 
scavenge when we're awake and when we're asleep. They are insatiable. But why not go to the source itself, our own skin? Food is everywhere, waiting to be harvested. But before you run to take a shower, consider this. Dust mites are really sanitation workers who help clean up our mess. Mites play an essential role in the ecological process, turning our biological waste into their food. So when we eat breakfast, they eat breakfast too. In fact, for every source of food, there's a group of hungry organisms scanning the menu. If we're not the specialty of the house, then something else will be. See you tonight, darling. I'll be home by six. This may look like a closet, but it's really a restaurant for insect gourmets. You can tell if they really like an entree by the holes. These small white larvae of the common clothes moth are especially fond of wool and fur. When they're fully mature, these well-fed larvae will reach the final stage of their development, becoming moths who will produce the next hungry generation.